before viewing this video, please watch the previous video in the playlist. Consider the following memory map. It's a memory map for two 1K chips, which have the following addresses, all of which are hexadecimal, hence the H. This is chip 0, this is chip 1, and they both have 1,024 locations, which is 2,048 locations in total. I will now draw out the schematic diagram for a microprocessor system that has two chips as outlined by the memory map. Here we can see that both chips have a chip select. And here I'm drawing the address bus, which is going to have to have 11 lines. And I'm going to be taking 10 of those lines to each of the chips. And we can see I'm labeling the lines appropriately. We can see here we have A0 to A10 leaving the central processing unit and we can see here we have from A0 to A9 and here we have A0 to A9 going to both chips. In this case 10 goes to each. Now these chips both need 10 lines because they have 1024 locations and 10 lines gives us 2 to the power 10 possible locations to be selected and 2 to the 10 is obviously 1024. We needed 11 lines in total because there's two chips put together. In total is 2048 locations hence the need for the address bus to be wired up for 11 of its lines to be used. We need to design a logic circuit that will switch the appropriate chip on when an address leaves the address bus. Now this line into the logic is the chip select signal. Now this is a low pulse when you want to select something, which you can think of as a zero in binary. Now this input here is A10, that comes from the address bus. We take two outputs from the logic circuit and we send these outputs to the chip select of both of the memory chips, as you can see here. Let's look at the logic circuit in isolation and let's draw it up here. So I'm labeling it as a logic circuit and I'm going to say it has two inputs A and B and two outputs F1 and F2. If I have a look at input B, well this is the connection from the address bus. In fact, it is address line A10. A is taking from the CPU which issues a control signal. F1, well that's an output being sent to the chip select of chip 0. F2 is being sent to the chip select of chip 1. And if we look at the diagram, you can see I'm labeling it with AB, F1 and F2. Here we can see the truth table for the logic circuit. And I've got the various inputs combinations and I have to work out what goes under F1 and F2. The key is to have a look at input A. Input A comes from the central processing unit and it's the low pulse. In other words when A is 0 is what we're interested in and that is here and it is also here. We need to arrange that F1 is a 0 once and F2 is a 0 once and all of the other Conditions of F1 and F2 need to be 1. Let's look at the first one here. This will ensure that chip 0 is selected, because F1 is a 0 and F2 is a 1. This one will ensure chip 1 is selected. Now, the last two are both 1s. So both chips are off in this condition, and both chips are off in this condition here. Let's emphasize this point by having a look at the condition here. F1 is a 0, so chip 0 is on. F2 is a 1, so chip 1 is off. The next one shows F1 being a 1, therefore chip 0 is off, and F2 is a 0, so chip 1 is on. Now, here and here, this is correct because you see they're both 1, here and here. So both chips will be off switched off. Here I've moved the truth table so I can derive the sum of min terms for F1 
and F2. Well, here's the sum of min terms being derived for F1. Consequently, I can say that F1 is the Boolean expression you can see here. I'll now do it for the other output, F2, and these are the min terms, and I end up with this here being the sum of min terms for the output F2. We can now start to minimise F1. So I'll simply start here, write that one out. Here I can see I've got A in common, so that comes outside of the brackets, and I'm left with not B or B in the brackets, which I know will be 1. Consequently, this will become A and 1. Now I know A and 1 will minimise to A, so I now end up with this. Now I also know that the A will knock out the not A, and I'm left with B or A. And in fact, I can rewrite that as A or B. So just to emphasize the fact, there is an axiom which allows this here to be minimized to a 1. Likewise, this is minimized to just A. And the A will actually knock out the not A. Now look at the previous videos in this playlist to remind you of all of these axioms, i.e. rules if you prefer. I have just wrote f1 equals a or b here for use later. We now need to minimize f2, so I'll start this by simply writing this out and spotting a is in common, leaving not b or b in the brackets. Now I'll write the next line out in knowledge that the not b or b will become 1, so that becomes a and 1. The next line therefore will become not a and not b, awed with the a because a and 1 becomes a, and I can also remember that the A knocks the not A out, so I end up with not B or A, which I can rewrite as A or not B. Now to remind you that becomes a 1, this becomes an A, and the A will knock out the not A. And I'll just write F2 equals A or not B here for use later. We can also minimise F1 by using a two-variable Carnot map, and I'm just going to do that here. So I'm labelling up the map appropriately, and I can see that this is plotted here, this is plotted there, and this one's plotted there. I then loop them, and I can see that all of that is in A, and I can see that all of this loop here is in B. Therefore, I can show that F1 is A or B. And if I look very carefully, I can see both of these are the same, so I am proving to myself that this is correct, this minimization is correct. I'll also minimize F2 by using a Carnot map, and I'll label the Carnot map appropriately, and I'll look at each term in turn and plot them as you can see here. And now I can see that that is in A, that loop, and this is in not B. Consequently, F2 minimizes to A or not B. And if I look at this and this here, I can see that both of those are the same. So again, I've done it two ways and in both cases ended up with the same minimization. So I use this as a means to check my own workings. For the minimized expressions, I now can produce a combinational logic circuit. So I can see A or B, well that's simply given by an OR gate. So F1 is A or B supplied by the OR gate. The next minimized expression, well I need to take B through a NOP gate to give me a NOP B, and I need to take the other input from the A to give me at F2 A or NOP B. Now all of this combinational logic circuit is now simply placed into the logic circuit here, and it's quite clear that we have a circuit suitable for selecting chip 0 and chip 1. Now this particular video used a number of techniques that were introduced in earlier videos in the playlist. So if you were unsure about how we minimize the Boolean expression or how the two variable Carnot maps actually work, please refer back to other videos on this particular channel. And in particular the videos that appear in the playlist that this video appears in.